Welcome, everybody, to the PHDJ podcast. My name is Mike. This is Joe Bunn. <laughs> what? That, that was a little dramatic pause there, Joe. I was like, wait, we we just said we were ready to go. <laughs> I like that uh, pacing. <laughs> good morning, sir. How are you? I'm good, man. Good morning. How good was morning. your fourth? Uh, the fourth was great, man. We shot a Followed lot of fireworks. Followed you on social media. Yeah, it yeah. looked like it. And a lot of fishing, too. A lot of fishing, uh, a lot of family time. Sister was in town with her husband and uh, my nephew from Montana. So literally the whole the whole Bun family. That's awesome. That's yeah, very cool. It was cool, man. And That's the, what holidays are for, right? It really is. It really is. Yeah. So I, I uh, yeah. And again, man, July and August are really slow here, to be completely frank. I, I just, you know, I don't work a lot in July and August. Right. Yeah, I guess that's the, that's a difference up here. I mean, uh -huh. our July is not quite as busy as June, uh -huh. but it certainly it doesn't fall off a cliff. I mean, uh, I've got as many weddings in personally as in July as I did in in June, and um, yeah, it's it's still a pretty good month. So. Awesome. Um, I attribute a lot of that to the uh, beach. We are so close to the beach. And like just last night, I did a ceremony right on the beach. And it's a, it's a popular spot. Yeah, isn't that amazing? This so beautiful cool. spot right in Sea, right? So yeah. lucky, man. You know, I, that's what I was Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was saying that in that post last week, about, like on the 4th. I'm like, man, you know, you hear people say it and people like, you know, just being born in America is like winning the lottery. I mean, you know what I mean? Like there's so many other countries that are whatever war torn poverty stricken whatever and and the, the fact that we were born in america man honestly like you should wake up just feeling blessed i do i i 100 agree joe and it, it's actually surprising because i know you like to usually avoid any political thing and mm -hmm. not that we have to get political but you know this is uh this is one of the reasons why people are literally dying trying to get here you know people yep. are, are literally traipsing all the way across mexico yep. to try to cross the southern border and um that's you know you can you can view that how you want to but right. but it is it's something that we should be thankful for because we were born here we won the the geographic lottery yep. and uh yeah it's a, and and hopefully a holiday like last week where we celebrate our independence and on our birthday if you will and we shoot fireworks off and everything else is a is a great reminder but speaking of which did you have a chance to listen to my mix i have not i have not i put together a two-hour celebrate it. america i call i called a party in the usa and and i picked just a bunch of songs that that mention uh -huh. america and, and and I shouldn't even say celebrate America because there are a few in there like Born in the USA sure, by Bruce, sure. which isn't exact. It's not exactly a very patriotic song, Correct. but it does definitely um, talk about America. Same thing with American Woman. Uh, I use the uh, Lenny Kravitz version, not the yep. Guess Who, but yep. you know that's not exactly a complimentary song, but it certainly talks about America and. And uh, I mixed a few. I slammed a few. I actually yeah. also inserted a few um, speeches and, and oh, uh, I found shoot. a clip of people reading the uh, declaration. So only like a couple of uh, seconds of yeah, that. Yeah, but right. yeah, yeah I, I worked really hard on it and shared it uh, last year. So if you haven't heard it and you want to go back, even though July 4th is done, you can find me on SoundCloud at DJ Mike Walter and uh, give it a spin. Oh, give for it a sure. I, in fact, I, I normally always go down much earlier and longer for the 4th of July, but we uh, we were in a different house this year, so it was a lot of us packed into one house. So uh, so I was flipping through social on the way down there, and I happened to catch, you know, Dom Nigella, one of uh, Roush's boys down in uh, yes. Dallas? Yeah. He, yeah. he yeah. had made one, and I think I just came to his first, and, and it was about an hour or so, and it was really one. That's well cool. done. So check his out too, Mike. I will. I'll check that out. And I was complimented. A few people said they played it uh, while they were yeah. shooting off fireworks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at, That's awesome. So that was kind of nice. So I know I had sent you two topics, and, and we'll probably get to both. But before that, I, I, I want to reference one thing, because I never realized this was even a thing. I did a wedding last night, like I said, and I put a post up. Uh, and by the way, I keep saying last night, we're recording on a Tuesday. I did a wedding on a Monday night, yeah, which is kind of crazy, rare. Uh, and I put up a post because this happened at my event. Big guy came out for the bouquet toss or the garter toss. Oh, I saw this. And um, literally six foot two, probably 240. That's what I mean by a big dude. Could probably be like a defensive lineman. 
and he catches the garter. So now I'm setting up the woman who caught the bouquet sits down and puts and the guy who caught the garter puts it on her. Mm -hmm. And somebody yells out, he's 14. Mm -hmm. And I go, no way, no way you're 14. I had his name by that point. It was Wyatt. And um, he goes, yep, sure enough. And and he was sitting at a table with a bunch of people from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I said, are you from West Virginia too? And he said, yes. And I was like, they grow them big down there. And uh, I just had a couple of good one-liners right. funny. The bride, and, the bride and groom had picked out um, Let's Get It On for that moment. So before I even hit that song, I'm like, this is wildly inappropriate. But you guys picked it. And then wah, 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 yeah. let's get it on. <laughs> But so I told that story on Facebook and uh, and a few people said they weren't aware of that custom. And I was oh, like, right. I thought that was now. Listen, it's not as common as it used to be. But d when you do the bouquet and garter, what what are the segments that you usually run through? Uh, it's pretty r rare, Mike, that we do what somebody referred to in that post as the remount. So we would just the do, remount. Yes. Yeah, somebody yeah. said a remount. We would just do the bouquet and garter. And, it, and then I think on our old planner, we said, you know, should the the catcher, you know, put it on the catcher of the bouquet, the remount. Should we do the remount or whatever, however we worded it. Right. And then I think in years past, we just took it off the planner altogether. It just because of situations like that or it just got awkward or whatever. But it, even when we did offer it or do it, Mike, it was pretty rare that somebody even knew about it quite frankly. So you don't have it on your planner. If somebody says to you, Hey, we want to do the whole thing, including the yeah. remount, which is, I'd never heard that term before. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Jones was the one who commented. He said, I just heard about the whole remount thing in the 1% group for the first time. Uh, and now I hear about it here. I had no idea. And then, and then Jess Lynn yeah. commented or Jesse Lynn, uh, yeah. wait, I've done hundreds of weddings and and I'm in so many wedding DJ groups and had no idea that DJs have the garter winner place the garter on the oh, bouquet. Wow. Hmm. That seems so problematic, but if it works, it works. And listen, yes, Jesse, it is problematic. Yeah. It it can often be awkward, uh, silly, <laughs> fun. Yeah. Uh, and again, just like Joe, we don't do it all the time. We, right. you know, we do it from time to time. Uh, but more of our couples uh, don't even throw the bouquet sometimes. Correct. But when they throw the bouquet, then whether they do the garter. But I'd say still. Maybe 10 to 15 percent of my weddings, I still do the whole thing. And but when you, I say whole thing, cul culminating with the guy putting the garter back on. But you would authorize that with the couple. You wouldn't just. Of course. Right, yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and then sometimes they pick out music. Sometimes they don't. And last night again, they had. So sure. uh, anyway, and then my final joke was uh, I said. Um, I said, I said, why, why do I feel like 20 years from now? Why it's going to be telling a therapist? About oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, and that got another good laugh. I mean, again, I, you know, I, I think it's it's important when you make jokes as an MC that nobody is specifically shamed right. or embarrassed. But if you can make jokes about a situation and I thought that that did in that situation, it certainly got a good laugh. I love That's, it. So I enjoyed it. But didn't yeah. some people say, like, if the roles were, were were reversed or somebody had mentioned, like, you know what? No doubt. If this was a 14 year old girl right. and a grown man, right. I probably wouldn't. I bet I would have had her give the bouquet to somebody else as a sit in. Oh, and then the okay. only joke I would have made in that situation, I would have been like, who sent their daughter out here? Who, right. who sent that? You know what I mean? I would have kind of and I, I wouldn't have even made a big deal about the sure. mother or parents, but I would have made that issue. That's, but, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. And listen, is that a sexist thing? The fact that I moved forward with a 14 year old guy and or boy, I guess you'd call him. Uh, and, and I wouldn't with a girl, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing when we hear about a female teacher having sex with an underage boy. Mm -hmm. We all kind of nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And it's not a horrible thing. But this I don't know if you saw the Epstein news that just broke the billionaire who yeah, did. is. Yeah. I mean, that's a heinous act. So I, I don't know how to interpret that. Right. Yikes. Yeah. Well, I, that, that's were, all I was. Were, you were smart to stay silent during that because there's a good chance that people are going to call me out as as sexist or whatever on this. And maybe I am. I don't know. It's old school thinking. But, yeah, there's something about a 14 year old boy. Maybe he's I don't know. I don't want to go down. it. No, I know. I know what you're saying. I, I just was wondering how you handled it. You know, if it was reversed and you were the MC and you. answered. Yeah, I that. would. I would probably I would either have somebody stand in for the girl or we would literally just pose the picture gotcha. and. Uh, and the grown man would not put the garter on. Sure, sure. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So um, anyway, as far as the topics I sent you, one I pulled these both from uh, from some of the DJ groups on, on Facebook because I thought they were interesting. Um, somebody put up a post, uh, and it was Josh Bennett on DJ Idea Sharing. When a bride sets up an initial consulta- consultation, mm. I have them fix the date and time, then I reach out to them. Uh, this has probably only happened one other time, but today's bride didn't respond to the text to confirm. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, but I came into the office anyway, and it appears as a no-show. Should have been here 20 minutes ago. So his question is, how do I handle this inquiry moving forward? Do I, do I call them? Do I text them? Do I email to reschedule? Do I charge more? Do I drop discounts if I had any? Uh, in other words, no longer offer discounts. Uh, uh, how do I just personally or don't even reach out? So what would – I'm sure you've had this situation ever. Of course. Of course Somebody yes. no-shows on an appointment. Of so course. how do you handle that? I mean, for me, Mike, I still want to salvage it. You know, we're all humans. I mean, I hate to sit here and admit on the air to however many hundred people listen to this. But, I mean, I've missed an appointment before. I just I screwed up. You know, I put it on the wrong day or I put it at the wrong hour, you know, and I'm getting called from somebody from my office or, you know, normally we exchange cell numbers the week of the meeting. And I just screwed up, you know, and I, I wasn't even going to be able to make it to the appointment. So. I kind of want to flip the conversation on its head after I answer this, you know, a little bit later in this conversation, you know, how do you handle it if you screw up? But yeah, Mike, honestly, I would, I would, I would still follow up as if, cause you don't know what happened. You know, what if, what if they were sick? What if they got in an accident on the way to your office? What if, you know, their boss held them late at work and they just couldn't get back to you? Their phone died. There's a million things that can happen. And so or like you said, it could have just been they put it on the wrong date. Yeah, and, and wrong yeah, date, and, wrong time. I mean, right, it's, you know, right. technology will fail you as we're <laughs> recording this. You can see me. Uh, yeah. For and, some reason, our video isn't working right. again. We, uh, we have no idea why. <laughs> we worked on it for yeah. 10 minutes and said, screw it. You can listen to right. the audio. So, you know, for me, Mike, I'm reaching out. You know, if, if obviously they ghost that night, they don't show up for the appointment. You know, I'm going to follow up for 20, 30 minutes, see if I can get them on the phone or, you know, maybe they're again running late or whatever. And then I'm definitely going to follow up the next day. Uh, same thing, phone call, email, text, whatever you, you know, have commonly been communicating with them on. And, and that's about it, Mike. I guess after about 24 hours of trying to, to rally them up, I, I kind of get the hint. How about you? I mean, yeah, I, I think it would be identical to that. And yeah. uh, I listen, I understand the frustration of especially because it sounds like he came into the office yeah, that day. I think it's a big difference. If, it's a big difference if, if you're in the office anyway and you've got a five o'clock appointment Correct. set and then they don't show. Well, you were in the office. You were doing work. You were doing other stuff. But, you know, when we make that rare Sunday, like, for example, Sunday, nobody's in the office. But yeah. if we have a client that says Sunday's the only day we can meet, blah, blah, blah. And one of us then comes in. Yep. That would be a very frustrating thing. Yep. But at that point, we would have conf- I would have confirmed that appointment probably three times that week. Hey, just double checking. We're on for Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. And then the day before, hey, again, a reminder, I'm coming in on my day off. I want to make sure you're going to be here. Uh, but given all that, I, I yes, I would definitely assume it was a mistake and not that they were ghosting to just cancel. So I would reach out the same thing. Hey, I don't know what happened today. Hope everything's okay with you. Um, w- assuming it is, I would love to reschedule soon. And then if I didn't hear back, probably one more reach out. Uh, hey, did you want to reschedule that appointment? And then at that point, I would just take it as um, they're canceling. But I would still give them I, – I know we've talked about this recently – I'm having real good success with that final email, yep. which is usually like my seventh or eighth attempt at getting in touch with somebody. It just simply says, let me know if I can be of any further assistance. I've reached out a few times and haven't heard back. And the last thing I want to do is be a pain. Mm-hmm. So I'll stop contacting. And a lot of times that basically that attempt to close the door mm-hmm. will finally remind a client, oh, shit, that's right. I haven't been getting back to him and we wanted more information or we wanted to set up a meeting. So, mm-hmm. you know, I would still send them, even if they ghosted and then didn't reply, I would still send them that final, you know, hey, I'm going to leave you alone now. Yeah. Um, because, again, that could inspire them to be like, oh, yeah, damn, I've been wanting to get to him, you well, know. I, yeah, I think you and I are, are very similar on on this you know, handling of the situation. Mike, let me, let me flip it on its head though for a second and and ask you, you know, uh, you don't, you could say one of your guys missed an appointment. What, what's the protocol then Mike to try and resurrect what at that point is a very shaky client or potential, you know, bride that is going. Well, I don't, 
I can tell you, I don't think we've ever done that with a sales okay. appointment. Okay. I, I know. I, I have. You I'm going to admit it here on the air. My, and and we'll get to your story in a second because yeah. that's interesting and it's and, and it's refreshing. And I am I'm not trying to uh, be coy. No, like, here. Hol- no, no, it's not being holier than thou. You just can't. Right. Think but it. I do know. I mean, I fired a guy a number of years ago, and and yeah. I talk about this at the at the workshop. Yeah. Um, he was a good DJ. Not great, but 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 on the good side, I certainly wouldn't have fired him, but for his customer service problems. Mm-hmm. But he had more than once set appointments up in the office, and so this is four months before, four weeks before a wedding, a month before a wedding. Right. So it's that review. It's sure. it's the process where he's now sitting, and then no showed, and he and he forgot about it. And you know, it was always when somebody else was in the office. Yeah. So it's not like the client showed up to a locked office, but sure. the client showed up expecting to meeting meet with this guy. And and the problem is he didn't live around the corner from the office. Saying, he lived yeah. at a half hour. Yeah. So when we finally got him on the phone, it was, oh damn, I forgot. Is that today? That's not today, you know, that kind of thing. And then finally after two war I think it was the third time. I warned him twice, the third time I let him go. Um but, but yeah, those were always very awkward situations. Yeah. Lots of apologies. I think I might have thrown in like a illuminated monogram to make them yeah. feel better. And then also basically made this DJ go to their house to be even more accommodating than the first time around. Um, so those were the kind of ways that we made good on it, if you will. Again, you know, like as different as Mike are, Mike and I are, we're very similar in this. You know, we... Uh, if if a client or or myself had, had ever missed, especially a sales meeting, uh, the advance usually we we do a lot of on the phone, like we've talked about on this show before. But if we've ever missed a sales meeting, you know, again, you're and, and it, it listen. If it hadn't happened to you guys, it will eventually happen. Something's going to happen where you put it on the wrong date, or you get off the phone with them and your best friend calls and you start talking to them about a beach trip and you forget to put it on your calendar. Whatever happens, happens. You know, it is a very, I'm not going to say impossible because I'm certain that we have resurrected probably 80% of the, of the couple, three times that it's happened over the last 10, 15 years, we've resurrected, I guess, I don't know. I mean, at least two of three that I can remember, but again, it was, all right, we don't, we're not going to ask you guys to come to the office again. Um, what, you know, would you like us to come to your house or to the Starbucks, you know, or Barnes and Noble closest to your house? We, you know, again, just like Mike said, we've offered, uh, we didn't offer discounts, but again, we did throw in stuff that we've normally would have charged for, whether it was a, you know, up, I mean, if I had to, you know, salvage a lead, I'd throw in 16 up lights because again, it doesn't really, it, it's, it's a, yeah, especially when it's been a mistake. <laughs> it's on your end. Right. Yeah. I mean, we screwed if it's up. been a mistake on, on what your staff or, or you personally, yeah. then yeah, I mean, I think that's the least you can do. And, and, you know, we talked about this either a week or two ago on this podcast about if you ever have to call a client to reassign yeah. and the spectrum of their reaction. Some clients are going to yep. freak out and be like, you ru- you're ruining my wedding. Yep. Some are going to be like, Joe, we trust your company. And it's going to be the same type of thing. If you right. ever make a mistake like that, you could get some clients go, oh, no worries. I was in your area anyway. And, and, you know, and you're going to get some clients that just never call you back yep. or send you a nasty email. Like that was the most unprofessional thing anyone's ever done. I'd never work with your company. Yep. I, you know, you, you never know until it happens. And in a situation like this, hopefully it doesn't happen. Yep. But if it does, I think the only thing you can do is be completely honest and say, look, it was a mistake on our end. I yep. apologize. I'd love to make it up to you if you'll allow me to. And, and if the client says, thanks, no thanks, then, then you move on. And at you the know? end of the day, guys, I mean, you know, you got to give a, a nice sales presentation or however you do your presentations but, but at the but the the reality of it is is all you're doing in these meetings and these face-to-face consulta- consultations is instilling confidence and as long as you can you know if you can resurrect this meeting ensure them which this has never happened knock on wood that you've never missed a wedding you've never been late for a show and again go through your presentation just like you would have if you were at your office I think that once you get to the end of that, they can see how confident you are. And they're once again, building trust in you because you know, that's what they're thinking. Wait a minute. This guy didn't show up for a sales appointment where I'm trying to give him $3,000. Is he even going to show up for my wedding? You know what I mean? Right. So it, it's all about instilling confidence. But if they take that second appointment, yeah. then 
obviously they do have, and it's probably goes to your track record. I was and your about reputation. to say, one hundred percent reliant upon your yeah. reputation at that point, right? Or, and because the, if and they the company if they with. didn't if they hadn't heard a lot of really good things about you, then they probably They'd wouldn't have out. even, yeah. And and understandably, you know, 100%. I mean, again, if if, if you know, I, I can think about times where like Kelly and I have remodeled the kitchen and yep. we've had some contractors come in. And if a contractor no showed in that situation, I, I, I probably wouldn't even schedule that second appointment unless he had come with some really good recommendations and people, you know, and I was we were really desirous to work with the guy. But, yeah, you, you can you can see why. Or he had done you his know. follow up and said, listen, guys, I screwed up. You know, I got caught right. up on a job site totally missed the you know buzzer in my pocket blah 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 right same thing so just to put a wrap on this you yeah. you mentioned uplighting uplighting is still kind of your your best or your main upgrade is that correct 100 percent. yeah okay so you don't you don't i know you flirted with offering tvs for a while or dancing on the clouds or sparklers are you have are you involved in any of those upgrades negative none of those okay you just mentioned do, are, do you have clients asking for the sparklers uh, I don't, I don't, Mike, and and I'll be honest with you. The, I, I just can, I don't know the situation with the fire marshals around here, but I just feel like some of these older barn venues would just absolutely flip out. When I, I in fact, I got that club cannon, you know, CO two gun, a couple of months ago off of like a scratch and dent sale on club cannon. Uh, they were selling some that they had taken to trade shows off their Instagram, and I was like, ah, I'll just buy one. And I remember walking it into this barn about a month ago, and I, I the look of panic on that lady's face was like, "What is that? You're gonna burn this place down?" And I was like, "It's freezing." Even though it's a gas. CO2, right? You're right. I'm it's like, a CO2. It thing. probably it has would put out any right. fire on this property if I needed it to. Right. I right. mean, and I was like, "Just let me blast." So it did you use time. it that oh, night? Oh yeah, I did. I was yeah, like, "You've yeah. got to trust me on this. It's going to set off a fire alarm." I'm like, "It's not. Please, just let me blast it once and show you." So anyway, but I mean, the the terror in her eyes as she sees me walking with this 20 pound tank in one hand and a, a giant wow. pistol in the other was pure terror. So the reason I bring this up is somebody else asked a, a question on on one of the Facebook groups about yeah. what's your best upgrade, and I thought that would be interesting to talk about. Although as soon as I propose that, I've I've realized and I remember that yeah. you're really uplighting is is really your your main one. Um, you know, we're still doing quite well with photo boots, although yeah. to be honest with you, everybody's got one, and yep. the prices are being driven down and down. Mine is way down too. The only novelty at this point really is the mirrored photo booth or the 360. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got those, you you might be one of the only few people in your market that does but i mean i don't know if you're seeing that but yeah, everyone's got a photo booth same same man and we we did drive the price way down but you know i've got some really good staff that that'll work for around 120 we stopped doing prints so you know if i if i can get 500 bucks for it mike for an ipad booth you know with not a lot of um Oh, so you're not even printing out. That's nope. just, um, nope. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that. listen, that might be the way to go. Who knows? Yeah. You know, w most people don't look at printed <laughs> photos anymore. I, mean, anyway, right? I was watching people walk away and lay it on the table and take a picture of it. And I was like, what, right. what are we doing here, guys? Yeah. Okay, because everybody wants it on their phone nowadays. The everybody, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so photo boots are still good for us. They're not what they were four or five years ago, but they yeah. still do well for us. Yeah. Um, we, we've been getting more and more intelligent lighting. The the lights that go on the top of towers. I've been yeah. putting a few pictures up on on my social media about my setups. I had uh, two this past weekend for yeah, the weekend before. Really good. Still to this day, I love up lighting. I think up lighting dollar for dollar is is no the brainer. best. Because it does really two different things. It's it's decor lighting early, and it's and it's um, I don't know what you want to call it uh, dance, action lighting, yeah, dance watch, lighting yeah. later in the night. So uh, if clients say to us, "This is our budget, and they can only afford one upgrade," mm -hmm. then we usually you know push them towards up lighting. I, I just still think it's the the best. And the sparklers are we're getting more and more requests for them. We mm -hmm. show them off when we showcase. Mm -hmm. So far, knock wood, most of the banquet halls around here have been accepting to them they really joe I, we have them and yeah. I, you can you can put your hand over oh, it oh i know and, i've watched and, the demo you know yeah um they're expensive and though right it's an expensive they're, they're not cheap they're yeah. they're expensive and then just like just like dancing on the clouds or the co2 stuff not only is there an initial investment but every time you use it right. you have to you know with the sparklers it's this granular stuff i, I don't know the name of yeah. it but yeah i mean so so it's not just the one-time cost like it is with a light yeah. but it's an ongoing cost but you can make money off them i mean oh, uh, if you get enough requests for them and and they become a popular enough upgrade so yeah. 
uh, those are uh, the to, so far the the biggest ones. And then on a personal note, I've been doing more and more officiating, which I consider that, that to be an upgrade. That. And uh, and I love it. I mean, obviously, I make more money. Like last night, I DJed and officiated, so the the you know the tab for me is a little bit more. But and it's more work. But I, I also enjoy it. I enjoy getting to know my couples that much more, and um, and and being there efficient. Did, I mean, do do the guests ever react? Like, are they ever like, "Were you the dude that was out?" Oh, there? often, yeah. yeah a lot yeah, of yeah. times, <laughs> I, I see it as soon as I walk out for introductions. I see that. Wait a minute, isn't that the <laughs> guy? And a lot of times, I'll change my shirt during oh, cocktail okay. hour. Yeah, because somebody pointed this out early on. As an efficient, I really shouldn't wear bang loud colors you know what i mean because you don't want to take away from the couple at that point yeah Yeah, but when i dj i'm you know a lot of times i'm into you know i should stand out i said this to somebody recently as an entertainer i think when when somebody walks into a room and scans the room they should look and go that's That's the dj right Right. Right. okay and a lot of times that comes and i know you and i disagree on this but a lot of times for me i'm a product of the 80s that comes from loud colors and Mm -hmm. and you know maybe a loud tie matched with a shirt that type of thing yeah but i shouldn't wear that when i officiate so even though i've changed clothes at that point i think people still recognize the voice and recognize the face and go oh my god that guy just officiated a you know an hour ago so yeah there's that kind of cool recognition i think anyway i think it's super cool yeah 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 yeah. i was just wondering cool man yeah so that's it we'll put a bow on this one yes sir thanks for listening guys appreciate you and uh keep listening we love you ciao